Let us pray. Almighty God, your only Son was taken into the heavens, and in your presence intercedes for us. Receive us and our prayers for all the world, and in the end bring everything into your glory. For Jesus Christ, our Sovereign and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the eleven and those with them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, Thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things, and see, I am sending upon you what my Father promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. Then he led them out as far as Bethany, and lifting up his hands, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he withdrew from them and was carried up into heaven. And they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they were continually in the temple praising God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. It's nice to be with you again. Uh, this is Ascension of our Lord, or at least we've moved the feast day of the Ascension of our Lord to this Sunday, May the 16th, so uh, I hope all is going well for you and that you are making your way through a, a beautiful month filled with flowers and rain and new possibilities, new possibilities. Our gospel message today is in many ways a transition. For the last few weeks, we've spent our time uh, following Jesus to Jerusalem and to the cross, and we've been with his disciples as they've seen our Lord be crucified, and we've waited for him to be raised from the dead and celebrated when he was raised from the dead, much as his disciples ultimately celebrated when they finally understood that that wonderful miracle had happened. And so for the last few weeks, we've been talking about Jesus in the presence of his disciples. It is the resurrected Jesus, still bearing the wounds of his crucifixion, who appears with his disciples, making them know, known in a, very, in a very concrete way that he is raised from the dead. He's made his presence known in a, in a variety of circumstances, blessing them with the gift of peace and encouraging them in faith. It's strange to read in today's gospel message that our Lord opened their minds to understand the scriptures. You would have thought that if you had been with Jesus for so many years, you would understand what he said, that he would, he would be captured and imprisoned and crucified and in three days raised from the dead, and that, and that his message of, of love to the world, a message of salvation and freedom, would need to go forth into the world. He opened their eyes in today's gospel so that there would, if there was any question, they would finally understand what this was all about. Indeed, they had a very important job. They were to be witnesses. And a witness is someone who says what he or she sees or has seen. Many of you uh, people probably watch court programs a lot. And you see how witnesses are questioned. And the idea is for the attorney to ask the right questions so that the witness can fully explain what he or she has seen and knows. And so the disciples now will become living stories of Jesus as they tell the story of his ministry, of his life among his people, of his words of hope, of his miracles, of his capture, his arrest, his crucifixion, his death, and his resurrection, and his coming again. Ascension Day, in many ways, is a transition. It's a transition from Easter to Pentecost. Jesus ascends into heaven, and his disciples are filled with joy, and they do what is asked of them. 
for they are to stay in Jerusalem until a great power comes and overwhelms them, a power which comes from on high. It's difficult when you get used to something and it disappears. You know, our lives were pretty much on a pretty even kilter, perhaps, until maybe mid-March of last year, and then they became somewhat chaotic. Perhaps they are becoming less chaotic as we move forward. But we've made a number of transitions, all of them somewhat uncomfortable, and we are continuing to make transitions. And in the midst of these transitions, we follow in Christ's path, and we share with others what we have seen, what we have witnessed. Perhaps we haven't seen Jesus in the flesh, but we recognize his power in our lives. We recognize how the word of God has affected others, how the love of Christ has changed lives. You and me are to be witnesses. We're to be witnesses during this time of transition till something else important happens. That something else important will be on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit literally blows into the lives of the disciples who are gathered in Jerusalem, literally blows into their lives with the sound of a rushing wind, with tongues of fire, and with the ability to speak languages which they did not know. There's something God wants us to do in the future, perhaps something marvelous and big. Perhaps there's a big surprise awaiting us, not too far in the future. In the meantime, we're in transition right now. Let us be good witnesses. The world needs to hear the message of Jesus Christ. It's not old business. It's not just history. But it is something that has an effect, especially now, especially in this time of transition. My hope for you is as you hear these scriptures, perhaps you can, I don't know, wonder with awe of a risen Lord who ascends into heaven. I must admit, I've seen a lot of computer-generated movies, and superheroes can do a lot of amazing things. But it must have just blown the minds of his disciples to see Jesus ascend into heaven. I hope for us someday we may see some amazing things, perhaps here on earth, perhaps beyond that. God continues to do miracles. God continues to amaze. Let us share the good news of Jesus Christ with others, especially now. Amen.
promises to hear us and answer in steadfast love. You call the whole church on earth to worship and bless you. Empower your church to bear joyful witness to your love made known in Jesus Christ. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You have fashioned a place for all your creatures, and you fill the earth with your glory. Mend what we have torn in the fabric of creation and replenish and nourish your world. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. In the majesty of your love, you rule the world with justice and mercy. Give those in authority the spirit of your love, so that all people may flourish and live in peace. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You heal those who are sick and bind up the brokenhearted, Attend to the needs of those in our congregation, our community, in workplaces, schools, and among families, and especially everyone on our prayer list. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You have gathered us as one in this congregation. Help us to love one another, be reconciled where we are divided, and share the riches of your grace with our neighbors. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. As you have raised Christ from the dead, in your love and mercy raise all who have died in the faith. We give you thanks for all your saints and for all their gifts among us. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Know that God's only Son has ascended into heaven to prepare a place for you, so that you might be lifted up, found blameless, and welcomed into the joys of God's eternal kingdom when Christ returns. And now may Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.